in order that this invincible warrior troop might be well appointed, St. Michael, the Prince of the Heavenly Militia, was placed at their head, and although not always in the company of the Queen, he was nevertheless often near her and often showed himself to her. The Almighty destined him as a special ambassador of Christ our Lord, and to act in some of the mysteries as the defender of his most holy mother. In a like manner, the holy Prince Gabriel was appointed to act as legate and minister of the Eternal Father in the affairs of the Princess of Heaven. Thus did the Most Holy Trinity provide for the custody and the defense of the Mother of God. All the appointments of the angels were a grace of the Almighty, and I understood that he observed, according to a certain measure, the laws of distributive justice. In his equity and providence, he took account of the manner in which the holy angels acted and felt in regard to the mysteries revealed to them in the beginning concerning his most holy mother. For in accepting the divine decree, each was moved by different affections and inclinations toward the sacraments which became known to them. Not in all was the same grace or willingness and affection. Some of them yielded with an especial devotion when they recognized the union of the divine and the human natures in the person of the word, which was to be enclosed in the limits of a human body and yet raised to the sovereignty of all creation. Others, in their affection, were moved to admire the love of the only begotten of the Father that caused him to become mortal and offer himself as a sacrifice for men. Others again signalized themselves in praising God for creating a body and a soul of such excellence that it would be superior to all the celestial spirits and that from it the Creator should take human flesh. According to these sentiments and in proportion to them, and as it were for accidental reward, these holy angels were selected to serve in the mysteries of Christ and his most holy mother. In the same way, those who during this life have signalized themselves in the practice of certain virtues are rewarded with the special crowns of doctors, virgins, and so forth. In pursuance of this, when these holy princes appeared in visible shape to the Mother of God, they bore devices or badges representing the different mysteries, as I will relate farther on. Some of them showed the emblems of the Incarnation, others those of the Passion, others those of the Queen herself and of her great dignity. But she did not immediately recognize these badges when they began to be shown to her, for the Almighty had told all these holy angels not to make known to her that she was to be the mother of his only begotten until the hour appointed by his divine wisdom, yet at the same time always to converse with her about the sacraments and mysteries of the Incarnation and the Redemption in order to excite her fervor and her prayers. Too tardy is human speech and inadequate my brief terms and words for the manifestation of these exalted lights and intelligences. <laughs>